This video will show how I designed and built a simple bog filter for a stock tank pond. The principles outlined in this video can be used for any sized pond. G'day, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. The beauty of a bog filter is that it's cheap to build and run, it uses natural processes, requires very little regular maintenance, and when it's sized and built correctly, it basically guarantees clean, clear and healthy water. For this bog filter, I'm using an old blue drum that was used to import olive oil. You can really use anything to create the filter. The important part is that it's sized in relation to the pond. The purpose of this pond is to grow out and hopefully breed Murray River rainbow fish. Those I'll then move up into one of my larger in-ground ponds. The concrete stock trough holds around 1500 litres. For a simple fish pond with small fish like rainbows, I want to have the bog filter sized at around 10% of the pond's volume. The blue olive barrel originally held 220 litres but I've cut it down and now it's around that 150 litres that I need. There's different situations where you would want to increase the size of the bog filter. For example, with big fish, you're looking at the bog filter being somewhere between 15 and 20% of the pond's volume. If you just wanted to keep tadpoles, you could have a 5% bog filter. Basically, the bigger the filter, the more waste it can process. I do have a handy little downloadable PDF available on my website. It has all the different calculations and formulas that I use when I'm building my ponds with bog filters. It's really cheap and just a handy thing to consult as you plan a pond build. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description for anyone that's interested. So once you know the size of the bog, you can work out the amount of water you need flowing through the filter. A simple way I calculate the flow rate for the filter is I take the empty volume of the bog and I multiply it by 6. So on this pond, that's the 150 litre blue barrel multiplied by 6 and this gives me 900 litres per hour. I had an old pump in the shed that does 1000 litres per hour and that's going to be close enough. There's a fair amount of wiggle room with flow rates and later in the video, I'll show you how you can discharge excess flow over the filter without impacting the function. I'll also put a link in the description to low cost, energy efficient, variable speed pumps that make it very easy to play around with flow rates. So now that I knew the size of the filter and the flow rate, I can start to build the filter. The filter works by pumping in water from the pond into the bottom of the filter. The water then flows up through different size rock and pebble and the clean water returns to the pond. We can also plant water loving plants in the top layer of pebble to help remove nutrients and also trap solid particles inside the filter. In a small filter like this, I really stick to plants with shallow root systems. This is a type of bacopa. Because it is a filter, we want to have an easy way to clean it out. Because this filter is above ground, I can easily add a clean out valve at the base to empty out all the muck that will accumulate down inside the filter. Having a clean out valve isn't possible on all filters, but you still always want a way to completely drain and flush the filter. I'll put a link to a playlist with my other bog filter videos that will show how you can still build it in a way to completely drain and clean the filter, even if it's below ground level. Anyway, in this blue filter barrel, I'm using uni seals to create watertight seals around where my pipes penetrate the barrel. Another important part of the build is that the water is pumped in over the top of the barrel and then the pipework goes down into the base of the barrel. This allows for the addition of a breather pipe. This pipe allows air to be sucked into the pipe if the pump stops. The breather pipe is really important because it prevents all the dirty water that is accumulated in the base of the filter getting siphoned back into the pond if the pump shuts off. It also keeps all the water inside the filter. 
The filter is full of living bacteria that are responsible for keeping the water clean, clear and healthy. All they require is wet surface area and some oxygen. If the pump is shut off for an extended period of time and the rock and pebble inside the filter completely dried out, you might lose all the good bacteria inside the filter. The bacteria inside the pond itself will be just fine. Of course, once the water is returned to the filter, the bacteria will grow again but it sort of resets the pond. New ponds take time to find their feet. Established ponds almost take care of themselves. The breather pipe is also handy as we can add a valve to allow access water over the surface of the bog if the pump is bigger than what we need. So to build this particular filter, I started by drilling in a hole for a two inch uni seal. You wanna match the hole size with the fat bit of the uni seal. When you push the pipe through, the fit is so tight that a watertight seal is created. The barrel I'm using had been a filter in a previous life and already had a one inch hole. Rather than cap it off, I just kept it as a bit of a secondary overflow. These two overflows return the clean water to the pond. This is a very simple and ugly setup and it's just for the purpose of showing how the filter is designed and constructed. But I used the same type of filter to create this pond, which is much nicer to look at. The overflow pipes simply overflow into a stream that then feeds the pond. The water is then pumped back to the filter, which is buried in the berm behind the pond, overflows into the stream, cascades back into the pond, and round and round it goes. So just because the filter itself is ugly, doesn't mean you can't use it to create something that blends into the landscape. As long as the filter's overflow sits higher than the water level of the pond, it's really easy. Anyway, once the overflow pipes were in, I drilled another hole for a one inch uni seal and fitted in this pipe with a valve attached. This provides the ability to easily drain the filter for cleaning and flushing. Remember, if you can't add a clean out valve, you still want to have a way to completely drain the filter. That could be as simple as dropping down a large diameter pipe with lots of holes drilled in and it can fit a sump pump or a pond vac nozzle. Some of my other bog filter build videos will show how I've done that on various different DIY projects. So now that the overflows and clean out ports were in, I could add the pipe work that takes the water down into the base of the filter. I'm using a length of one inch diameter pressure pipe there's an elbow fitting on the bottom to send the water around the base of the bog and there's a T-piece fitting near the top that will be the breather pipe. The breather pipe sits at or just above water level. Remember it's there to prevent siphoning if the pump shuts off. And I'm using some old slotted drainage pipe to help create a bit of a void in the base of the bog. Then I'm layering in some old larger rocks, even some old bricks. As I layer the rock, I gradually get smaller and smaller. Then I cap it off with some 20 millimeter or three quarter inch pebble, or in this case, scoria, as it's cheap and I had it on site. The aim is to pump the water into the base of the filter, have it rise up slowly through the various grades of rock and pebble. These rocks and pebbles provide the surface area for the beneficial bacterias that will purify the water for you. I then give all the rock a good wash over the surface of the bog. The clean out valve is open. This is exactly how you would perform a clean out and flush. You shut the pump off, direct water over the surface of the bog, preferably pond water so you don't kill off the bacteria. Once the water coming out of the clean out is clean, you're good to go. Now that that's done, I can connect the pump to the filter. I'm using a flexible pipe that I had laying around. It's 20 millimetre or three quarter inch and the pipe into the filter was 25 mil or one inch pressure pipe. To connect the two, I've just got a reducer with barb fitting that can accept the flexible pipe on one side and a socket that can accept the pressure pipe on the other side. I recently did a video on different ways you might plumb a DIY pond and filter so if you think that's something you'll struggle with, feel free to check that out. You might as well just watch all my videos while you're there. 
Anyway, I fiddled around a bit with the configuration and ended up with a few more elbow fittings. Remember, all that's important is that you move water from point A, the pond, to point B, the filter, without any leaks. And even a small leak won't be the end of the world if it's contained within the pond or filter. It's only an issue if it can escape the water holding areas. A couple of quick points about the plumbing. The overflow needs to be bigger than the inflow from your pump. The PDF on my website I mentioned earlier has a handy section that shows the diameter of pipe required for different pumping volumes. Just always make sure that the overflow is bigger than the pipe from the pump. Water under pressure fits in a smaller area than water flowing via gravity. On this pond, the pump sits inside the pond. I have it sitting about 20 centimetres or two thirds of a foot above the bottom of the pond. There's two main reasons to sit the pump off the bottom of the pond. Number one, if there's a leak in the plumbing that doesn't fall back inside the watertight areas, you could potentially drain the pond entirely. That might blow up your pump and it will almost certainly kill the fish if they're out of the water for an extended period of time. And number two, if you sit it on the bottom of the pond, it will pick up way more muck and get blocked way more frequently. On this pump, I covered the intake screen with some shade cloth. This stops larger pieces of debris getting into the pump and clogging or breaking the impeller. But more importantly, as it collects debris, it makes it almost impossible for the pump to suck up any baby fish. At the end of the day, the purpose of this particular pond is to breed the rainbow fish for my larger dream pond. The debris on the shade cloth probably reduces the flow rate of the pump, but that's okay, as a bog filter doesn't need a high rate of flow to be effective. On my larger ponds, I position the pump inside a DIY skimmer, intake bay or negative edge reservoir. Again, you can learn more about all those by checking out my previous videos. When it comes to planting, select plants that are easily removed and thinned out. Aggressive plants are great at removing nutrients, but they can be a nightmare to maintain if you allow them to take over. So I think that just about covers it. Remember, you can use anything that will hold water to create a bog filter. It's just important that you size it correctly in regard to the pond's intended purpose and size. That PDF I keep mentioning will help walk you through all that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.